whole the whole gatekeeper thing, like initially it was like a, a kind of like a you know, like a uh, like a hint of like what's going on with Apple. You know, is it gonna get clo- more closed down? You know, that's just well, no, and, and that's right in line with what we're fixing to start getting into, and that's why I put a hash in and then change I don't think Gatekeeper is, is, is locking it down. Um, uh, oh, no, but it, it has to do with the, with a different thing, and that's what we're going to fix to get into. I'm but, almost afraid that uh, we're going to end up with Mac and Windows where, you know, it's going to be something like the online gaming service where, you know, you have to, you just get a big monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and you, you, you go to your link, and then we give everything over to the Google them because they have the cloud solution. <laughs> um, and, that, and that goes into two things. A, uh, it, I find it odd, but it explains why we had that Mac refresh not too long ago where they basically killed the MacBooks and they killed some of the older Mac lines and so on and so forth. Um, you know, they're going to kill all the Macs before 2008. You know, basically, you're just, you okay, they're now e-waste. No, there are some 2007 iMacs, but that's about it. Yeah, but, but, but most of them are, are pretty much the two. Now, now, granted, that is four years old at this point, so... Right, Mac Pro is 2008. Well, it's due to the EFI. The EFI has to be 64-bit, so people use that. You want to talk about locking down? Yeah, you want to talk about locking down? Yeah, locking down. Oh, my God, you and EFI, you know, the Windows, you know, is actually using UEFI. To lock down to make things single bootable to OS. I know that, although we don't know if they're actually going to do that, but they can, and that's one thing a lot of people in my camp are going, oh, hell no, you aren't. We are not having locked BIOSes in the United States. Do you know how many other countries we're finding that we're in? You will not do that here. No! <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Well, and, and that goes on to this here. I, I have paraphrased it, but there's this little comment down here at the bottom, and this is I'm literally this this is factual. This is somebody who has a radio show. They're talking to millions of Americans. You know, it's a syndicated radio show across thousands of FM stations, and you know they're giving people technical advice. Apple makes things simple, and they said some other stuff. Unlike MS, where you have three or more ways of doing the same thing, and so they actually said Microsoft, but like I said, I'm paraphrasing. To think the Apple way, you need to take a step back and come at it like a third grader would. This is literally what she said. <laughs> and they were talking about how this is a good thing. And I heard the statement, and I almost drove off the road. I'm like, wait. Yeah, third grader. I, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So what we want to advocate is that everybody turns their brains off, doesn't think, and just kind of goes on autopilot and that dumbs themselves you down. Years ago, somebody just <laughs> threw a huge sledgehammer at a screen. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that's very, that's very much what we were uh, arguing before our where it was where uh, it was Rusty and I were discussing that what is expected of users and oh uh, it's it's one way or nothing. I would tell you in business that that doesn't work. Having multiple ways of doing the same thing is an expression of humanity. We're all different and diverse in how we attack problems and solve them. And the more ways that a company allows to do one result, the, the larger your demographic can be in productive getting that result back. No, and, and like you're saying, especially in productivity, I mean, I can just see the productivity curve going. If you really lock it down to, well, everybody's got to be this type of person, I'm like, yeah. what the? F- uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> and the argument that Russell and I were talking about to give people, if you want to look up that video, Russell, it was when we were discussing the article that I went off on where he was talking about single tasking. It was that guy who said he was totally out of his mind where he, said he was trying to make excuses for iOS. It's, it's one good. of the bit rant ones. The question yeah, is, had exactly. I called it bit... I think it was bit on multitasking. I'm going to have to yeah, look for it. Yeah, it was on multitasking. He was like, well, we don't need to multitask. Oh, my God, did I go off on that guy. 
stuff winding up being cloud-based, but the reliability of it is honestly going to depend on how well backed up it is. Uh, yeah, 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 but they're going to end up... The, the, how the, the people that you know, like own the cloud, like make the cloud, say their uptime is like, okay, what's the uptime on your ISP? That's your uptime. Well, no. Uh, uh, okay, here's the thing. How, uh, when you upload... If I, can, if I can interject real quick, because I think you're going to go off on the wrong argument. It's not about uptime because a local node can have downtime. In right. The, the the reason why ASP well, I'm saying, failed. I have done it to you, like the wait, 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 wait. The reason why ASPs failed before, and the reason why cloud will not be as dominant in the future, is that once the first exploit happens or someone's information or privacy truly becomes a concern, and, and not as many users are naive that property which killed the ASP model before will kill the cloud model now. Oh, oh, okay, but Vit, here's the reason I disagree with that. I used to think that way. I used to agree adamantly with you, but we have people losing their jobs, getting fired, getting suspended from school over huh? Facebook, and people still keep using Facebook. 90% of people who leave every time shit like this happens come back within 30 days. The reality is the user has basically accepted, I'm going to get hacked. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure. I mean, in the U.S., Facebook, wasn't it? Facebook uh, registrations are down versus the world. And, and you know, it, it's becoming more passe. I think that I run into at least people every day that are concerned about their information. Now, that takes a while. It, even with, not on Facebook. Yeah. It, 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 like, yeah, you know what? If we really try and build this network out, one of us is going to have to get on Facebook. <laughs> well, this is a pseudonym, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, the thing of it is, is that look how credit card fraud and how people are now buying into um, credit monitoring and things like that. It takes a while. Yes, it does. But it does, right? And you know what? You just brought up something that I have heard more than one person bring up right now. More and more, your online profile is being used against you in very much the same way your credit profile is used against you. As somebody who's a victim of ID theft, we have plenty of laws in place for dealing with this. You know, I can file fraud alerts. I can get... I can get two free credit reports per year. I am allowed by federal law to request a representative be assigned to my file who I can call directly and we can audit through my file. I have to take the time to go through it and keep an eye on it, but we can go fix this, do this, do that. It's, it's a full-time job, but so the reality is why the law in theory is good. It, I, I can either live my life or I can keep my information accurate. Hey, but, but, get, but the, that, that law is, is a good law. Because I, 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 I know that. And the fact that you have the ability to go, no, I want to see what my information is to check it for accuracy. And that really is the thing that's missing for your online profile right now. I mean, you've got, you got 20-year-old women that the online thinks they're... 68 year old men and like how do they contest that how do they correct it you know it, 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 well, exactly and it's like your argument the crux of it is is, a, is a individual responsibility and it's going to come to that because the law in the end goes back down to the individual right and and with ASPs though it was corporate law and I, I think things happen more rapidly in terms of policy not necessarily logistics, but in terms of policy and, 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 and corporate and corporate anything, uh, then it will happen in consumer and retail uh, th because there's a lot of money on the line. Obviously, a lot more to lose as a, as a whole entity versus a consumer worrying about. And, and quite frankly, let's be frank that uh, it's more of attractive a target, a corporate entity, which you can get more value from in exploiting than say a consumer with maybe less resources in the end. 
Well, I, I, honestly, where I do see it going in the end, although it took over a decade for you know the laws to get properly drafted and things to happen uh, where you could get access to your Equifax, Experian, TransUnion files and for it to become those three companies. Uh, but eventually down the road, I do see you you know, giving Google like 20 to 30 bucks like you do, or, or, or 10 to 30 bucks like you do right now to get a, a credit profile. It's like, okay, Google, give me my ID profile. Uh, okay, Facebook, give me my ID profile. Give me, my, like, you, you, you'll go to these companies and say, okay, what do you think I am? And, and, and you'll you'll have the ability to challenge. Now, I, I don't like the way Google's doing it right now where they're yeah. saying, we'll let give me, you five, no, no, Google started this program where you let give them, I think, they'll give you, I think it's like five or 20 bucks a year and you basically give them a shitload of information that's worth right. way fucking more. And I'm like, you people are nuts. <laughs> well, yeah, let me, let me, let me say this. Here's, here's the new thing that's happening. Social media started off by being very anonymous. We could all hide behind something we were not. And, and then, and popular. but now their whole business model is about data mining. They want exactly. to sell now, you. It's actually who you really are. Now, security in, in, in the name of the company that you want to participate on, whether it's Facebook or something else, mm -hmm. is now using. Well, we need to make sure that you really are a real person and who you really are. As that, because that's actually now starting. That. I believe, in my opinion, will be, begin the end of this whole G Google did thing. finally... Because people loved hiding behind something they were not. That was the power of the internet. You could be somebody you were not in your real life. G Google now, did finally network, back off of that. you could be somebody you, who you really are, that's a very different story. Yeah. Google did finally back off of that where they said they're not going to suspend pseudo accounts, but they're very they're very adamant about the fact they want it to be an ID service. Oh, yeah. So they're like, create a pseudo ID all you want, but that's what you're going to be. <laughs> I think once you lose and social media loses the, the anonymity behind it, people will behave extremely differently with the social networks. A lot of people think that people, everybody who is anonymous, who wants to their anonymity is like a troll, or is, is that a car troll. Okay, what about Samuel Clemens? What about Richard Sanders? He's got Mark Twain, you know, Benjamin Franklin, you know, what about them? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just because they don't have a face and their name is a lie, doesn't mean that their, their opinion's less valid, you know? Yeah, and for those of you who wonder what he's talking about, uh, Mark uh, Samuel Clemens wrote under the pen name Mark Twain. You know the same for uh, several people throughout history. They've written under pen names. Uh, and that was a woman, so that was an obvious thing because back then, you know, women couldn't write. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, like the 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 well, and, and honestly, that's one of the th that that really is the the true modern equivalent because in a lot of cases when somebody is publishing anonymously they're publishing things of a controversial nature that they're being honest I'll be back in is, that they're being honest but they're not uh, you know wanting to go okay here's my address come burn my house down <laughs> well, these are my opinions and my face ain't attached to it I'm saying what, what I believe, and I don't have to... Uh, no, the, the, there, there's, you know, there's a good deal of people on the blogs, on YouTube, and other stuff. Their face is attached to it. They give everything except for specific information. And, you know, they, they, they anonymize, but they, it, it, you know, they're adamant they're signed. If you come across them randomly on the street, you're going to, and you're a fan of their thing or a hater, you're, you're going to know. But they don't go out of their way to make it easy for somebody to be a pain in their ass. And uh, you know what? It, 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 everybody decides their own individual comfort level, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, yeah. You know, it, there, there, we have people in our society who would stand up at the top of their lungs and go, I'm religion, yada, yada, I, yada, 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 my politics are yada, 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 you know, they don't care. And then there's people who are, you know, this is my public self, and this is what I really fucking think. Yeah, don't wear a mask, metaphorically speaking. Okay, Ben Stein. <laughs> uh, you know, I have tried to do his voice, and I just can't do it. I cannot get that calm. <laughs> I remember when, like, the first cloud servers came up. Most of them crashed. 
Well, no, yeah, we, we, at that point we were pushing techno technological limits. I mean, well, it, you know what uh, they they were filling those up uh, uh, Xbox servers up with. Go ahead, you might as well say it now. Ron, it was just that they got so much of it that it overpowered their servers. So you know, lots and lots of porn. <laughs> You know, you, you know what, and, and you know what, there, there, I have homework for anybody who watched the show, because I, can, I cannot show this, the BBC would yank it, but there's a show y'all need to go look up, and it's on Netflix, it's called Coupling, and in the first season, there's an episode called Lesbians, actually the, the title of the episode is Inferno, the premise is about lesbian spank Inferno. And it's not as bad as it sounds. Basically, it comes down to uh, his girlfriend finds porn. And it, it, basically, the whole episode crescendos. You see, it becomes all about him using pornography. And eventually, he just snaps and goes off on this little rant about how the entire progress of the human race has been about blokes trying to get a better look at women's bottoms. <laughs> I'm like... You know what? As bad as that is, it's kind of true. You know what? If we didn't like sex, we wouldn't be here. So, fuck off. <laughs> like, so I honestly recommend everybody go watch that episode. You know, it, it, it's funny. It's done with tact. It, it, it's it, it's humor. It, it, it's kind of one of those. Yeah, you you'd get the okay. <laughs> Well, I remember when the Apple first uh, came up with, like, uh, the, uh, like, uh, what was it called, their cloud service back then? There was Dot .Mac, and there was also, uh... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and I have to laugh every time I see your email. I still have an email with Dot .Mac. Yeah, I just... <laughs> but so what was funny about Dot .Mac was that a whole bunch of their servers were just filled with nothing but porn. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, uh, I guess somebody's had it done a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> Not that I have anything against it, but um, I, I, I have never been able to understand the, you know, I, I, I understand pornography, but, you know, the disproportional, like, like you're saying, like their servers were just full of porn. And I was like, what are you backing up your porn? I was like, what? It's like, it's like, I, I'm not, I, I, I don't know. Dude, it, that stuff is taking down cloud servers. So I know, it, it, it's one of those things that like, it, it, the disproportionality kind of. Now yeah. they're trying to censor, like, no porn is allowed to be put on our cloud servers. Well, that, that is less about trying to keep the system from being overloaded and more about worrying about federal seizure and stuff. Because, <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like you go through airport security and they confiscate your laptop. I'm going to ask you if you got porn on them there encrypted hard drives. It's like, I would encrypt porn. <laughs> you know, people actually would do. Would be surprised. Yeah, it's like, I encrypt things of value. Do you really? It's like... <laughs> Realistically, if you're, bring, if you're gonna bring data overseas, you might as well just mail it to you. You know, less bullshit. <laughs> exactly. So what's the freaking point? But yeah, they found out it was just nothing but porn. They had to let the guy go, and his computer was never found found again. <laughs> and yeah, uh, that would really piss me off if airport security took my computers. Uh, I, I would just be... Okay. You can have that hard drive, but I want the rest of it. No, I want the hard drive. That's the reason... Uh, you can keep the computer. I want the hard drive. Because <laughs> I'm going to have backups, but not of what I was working on that day. Ah, uh, right. I'll lose all my work for the day. <laughs> what about the hot box? <laughs> but then again, that's an encrypted, so that's going to... Well, and honestly, uh, I tend not to use airport Wi-Fi hotspots because their security is a joke. Yeah, 
If I'm dealing with something, yeah. If I if I am dealing with something that I'm having to encrypt the data for security reasons, there is no way in hell I'm loading any of that. Yeah, especially since it's an open network and everybody can get and everybody has the key. Well, w w w once it's encrypted, that's one thing. But it, 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 but I mean, an encrypted data burst in an airport? Oh yeah, the TSA is not going to come down on me. <laughs> oh, oh, they're going to get out of here for just for using SLs. Oh, God forbid, or TSL. 